if there was ever an interdisciplinary problem, it's climate change. It's a scientific phenomenon that was caused by the um, biggest market failure the world has ever seen. I'm Associate Professor Ailey Gallant. And I am a climate scientist. So my name is Dr Svenja Kiel. I'm a geographer. I look at the political and economic dimensions of climate change. I'm Anke Loru and I'm an environmental and resource economist. Whenever we have climate extremes, we have effects on food security, on water security, you know, we have Floods in Eastern Australia, for example, putting prices at the supermarket way up. People having to move out of areas because they can't live there anymore because of, of uh, flooding or fires, things like that. And that has all sorts of knock-on effects back into society. It touches everything from psychology to business to economics. Everything, really. Politics, governance, engineering strategies to build better levees to make sure that floods don't, you know, aren't as bad in the future. It is by its very nature an interdisciplinary problem and the only way we're going to find effective solutions is to work together. Within my research group at the moment, we're really trying to understand drought. We're trying to understand how drought works. We're trying to understand how drought will change with climate change. And the reason we want to do that is so that we know what information to give people who manage and prepare for droughts so they can better those practices into the future. And if we don't have that data, they don't understand and they can't use that information to better their practices. So that's really what we're trying to do at the moment. I guess we can think about solutions in different ways. So one of the things that geographers do really well is to collaborate uh, across other disciplines. We are famously called the interdisciplinary discipline. We play well, we play nicely with others. And we partner a lot with uh, governments, international organisations, communities and business uh, and bring them together to develop solutions for mitigation and adaptation. We um, engage a lot with infrastructural and nature-based solutions. That's something that geographers uh, bring a lot to bear uh, to understand how we can green our cities, for example, or how we can use mangroves and other, uh, other ecosystem-based services to help protect ourselves against uh, climate change impacts. The economics is really well-placed to design market-based policies that put a price on carbon, and that ensures that uh, required emission reductions are achieved at minimal cost. When you consume steel, it's produced using a lot of energy, using a lot of emissions, but you're not paying for those damages. It's the, the externality is not internalized. And that's what a, a carbon price does. You, you, I mean, and that's what economists do. They, they internalize externalities to make, you know, to, to align the private, so the private cost with the social cost. And so when you buy something, you don't even think about whether it's environmentally friendly or not. You know that the price is higher because it's not environmentally friendly. Right now, we are in the middle of a global transformation of this world. In that sense, understanding climate change from so many different points of view is essential to be able to create those transformative and effective solutions collectively. Come along and find other people who are like-minded and that will give you the confidence, the skills, the mindset, the connections to really unlock a career that makes a real difference to one of the greatest existential threats that we're facing in this century. Mm -hmm.